Dun, 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 dun. Welcome back to another session with Cooking with Ammonia. Today we're going to be making the previous dish that we did um, last week with the uh, frying pan, but I didn't have a big quick wok pan, so it was slow wok. So what we're going to do here is we're completely mixing it up. I'm adding in tortilla strips like in the days of old, like when I was a kid. I mean, oh, officer. Mm -hmm. yeah, you got to go Mexican style with this. So what I'm just doing here is, again, I'm frying initially the carrots and any hard vegetables I might have. Like in this case, just some raw mushrooms. Basically any rub. And so then I'll be mixing in, after that's all fried, the uh, other veggies that were in the freezer. So I don't need to fry them because they're pre-steamed. Um, and, of course, our egg mixture goes in there well, as well. And it has the fresh tomatoes in there. You don't need to cook the tomatoes as long. Definitely not. Same length as the eggs. So technically, actually, I'm just going to stir this up. He's mixing the bowl and he's mixing it well. Got all the ingredients straight from hell. Yeah, but, but it's from slaves from hell. Organic slaves. Don't worry. <laughs> I am an organic slave. Slave to the health. Alright, so what's really important is you have to soak the tortilla strips in your batter. Otherwise it'll taste like smatter. These are some really low quality tortilla strips though. They are, so... I mean, yeah. The they taste like is, they were ground with uh, cleaned mule's feet. Yeah, I don't know what the hell their problem is. Um, I also... You see, potatoes, they... they they can't take too long to fry if they're raw. So you got to pre-bake them. So like you eat baked potatoes, you make a bunch of extra, then you come in and you take the extra ones, you cut up real quick because they're soft, and you can just, you know, flub it right in there so it doesn't have to bake very long. Um, I mean, yeah, basically... I got the oven preheated. We got that mixed good enough. I'm just going to add the necessary amount of oil because we got to make this real fatty. I don't have palm oil, which I want to use. So I'm just using a bunch of this three oil blend like I usually do. I want to make sure the carrots can get soaked good enough. Enough oils in there, you know. Because the mushrooms will start soaking it up once it's baking. And based on what we did in the frying pan, it should only take like maybe, eh, at most 10 minutes and it should be fried up and then we can just toss all the rest of the ingredients in there, including the cheese, which I can also just add right in there. It's called an ultra omelet, you know, it feeds your whole family from dinner or breakfast. Feed a family of five for five forty nine flatulences of no no don't, please don't it's not adding that well let me repeat i am not into farts i thought you were gonna say five night at freddy's and then you started farting <laughs> i just <laughs> when you make a joke yeah do, we'll do five nights at freddy's uh figuring animatronics do they fart you know they have squeaky fart noises they fart <laughs> that'd be so funny <laughs> that'd be so hard all right. Making little squeaky fart noises as they run after you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, I'll set it at 10 minutes and I'll probably check it at 5 and stir it around, see what we're cooking with. But yeah, that pretty much sums it up. And then we just toss all that on top and let it really uh, bake for like another couple minutes. That's it. Shing! Jum, 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 jum. All right, we're back. We're seeing if these carrots are soft. They're almost there. It's been eight minutes. Yep, 10 minutes is right on the mark. Now, don't forget, I have put the succulent um, hemp bud right in there with it, you know. So it's going to really marinate and make me salivate before my mealtime. Sizzling. Sizzling good. Sizzling right. All right.
Do it right all night, all night, all night. Do it right. I just gotta say, I watched my neighbor eat an incredibly dry mushroom off of her lawn while I told her not to. And I was like, bitch, I'll eventually go get some redwood mushrooms. What is wrong with you? She also ate those pickles with calcium uh, chloride, which are disgusting. Yeah, never keep poison food, like, in your pantry, even in a spot, like, to return to store or something. You gotta keep it, like, in your shed or in your car trunk. Because, like, neighbors will come over and they'll be all like, Oh, man, you eat healthy. I'm just going to start grabbing everything out of your pantry and poison myself. <laughs> That's what happens, you know? Um, she also ate a dry mushroom off of her front lawn. I didn't know what the fuck that was. I don't know why. I wasn't going to eat it. You don't eat dry mushrooms off of I, weird I, I told her no. I don't know... I mean, I licked dry um, redwood trees. They're giant mushrooms. Yeah, but yeah, but that's different, dude. She just <laughs> ate a dry mushroom that was growing on her lawn. I was like, don't put that in. No. I, I'm sorry. I just... People stress me out with how fucking stupid Anyways, they are. Um, I put it all in there. Look, look at that tasty casserole. Boom. So I'll just put it in there and see how long it takes to bake. You know, five, ten minutes. I don't know. Dude, I, I have stress from that, man. Yeah, cool. Well, um, it's like this, um, every time new people, it seems like, come into our life, it's like as though they bring baggage, not like emotional baggage, but like, like as though they have all these preconceptions of what they want everybody else to be baggage. It's not just at us, it's like it's just a generalized problem, but it's bad with us. Like, everybody has, like, for example, there's all these women who had, like, tattoos on their feet, I noticed, over the years. And they're always eating healthy now, and it's true, or whatever. But, like, they're already sort of married or whatever, and it went on and on that way year after year. And they always have these preconceptions about what me or somebody else is thinking in every scenario. And, like, you can't talk to someone because maybe they're gay and they think that um, you're into them. Or maybe they're lesbian and they think you're into them and they really don't like it because they're that lesbian or something. They don't like bearded males. Like, but they're all in this state where as though you should know these things and putting off these signals in their heads. I, it's horrible. Yeah, and so all I do is I occasionally just tell people I'm not attracted to you. And then they actually are so self-conceited that they act like, you know, I actually have one chick say, yes, you are. And then I said, I'm fucking not. <laughs> and then I immediately ran away. Yeah, you just sprint away after yelling you're not, you don't yeah. like someone. Yeah. Because they all, like, look around like they're insane. Like, there's yeah. those people, too. Never forget, there's those people. Yeah. I was just thinking about it. And county fairs, so you know how buckets, you know, the county fairs are like bountiful, like a bunch of like fruit spilling out of them. So what if instead everybody loves it, the fetish, like he was saying, Grant, tits in a bucket. So like instead you have like a pillbox of um, straw bales around, you know, all built up supposedly in the gazebo area. And then women stick their tits, you know, and smooth out bottoms of pails with no bottom and then the tits stick out. And then, like, you know, all around, people have to admire their tits out of the bucket and not know who women it's attached to in the whole, you know, general state area. Then they all vote, you know, for the number of tit they like. <laughs> and then, you know, it's all in the up and up. But then kids run up and nurse on the tits, you know? And then get free titty milk because they're under a certain age. You know, you have to be under this age to suck the titties, you know? <laughs> I think this is done. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. I think it's delicious enough. Oh, yeah. Listen, Ammon. That's immoral. The buckets have to be metal polished. Like, they have to have, like, brass bands that yeah, are polished the into, the, into the wooden buckets. Or else it's immoral, okay? <laughs> of course, the buckets are kind of short. Yeah, it's the shorter yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know... Because who likes titties that are, like, distended out with, like, not much attachment to the breasts? 
to the chest anymore. Yeah, like, they're especially. That's gonna lower your score. You, you know? gotta have the specialty buckets. You yeah, know? specialty kid buckets, I guess. <laughs> This bosom is... buckets. They're gonna be called bosom buckets, though. That's so classy. This is my grandma's bosom bucket. <laughs> yep, my tits grew up just like hers. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs>